So in this video, we're going to talk about macromolecules, like carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, the things that make life possible. Let's start off by looking at the elements. If you were to almost look at like an ingredients label for a person, well, first off, you're 110,000 calories. But if you were to look at ingredients by weight, you're made up of a lot of different elements. But when you look at the entire periodic table, the green ones are the ones that are common, purple ones are kind of trace, and then the rest you're not really made up of at all. 99% of the mass of the human body is just six elements. Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphorus. That's it. That's all that makes up who you are. And you can see that just oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen, that makes up the vast majority of you right there. That's quite a bit. But these molecules can be arranged inside your cells in these things called macromolecules. Some of them are so big, they have to be called macromolecules. Like your carbs and your lipids and your proteins and nucleic acids, these things are hundreds of thousands of molecules and atoms long. Macro means large, but molecules are small. So macromolecule actually means hundreds or thousands of small molecules built up together. Remember, these are really, really tiny, but when you take a whole bunch of these and smash them together, you get these massive structures. And these massive structures are actually made up of these small repeating units. We call these small units monomers, and we put them together to make large things called polymers. Maybe you've heard of that. The best way to think of this is like Legos. The monomer is the individual Lego brick, but you put those together and you can create all sorts of different structures. There's no limit to what can be made, only the creativity that you have. The individual unit is the monomer, and the repeating structures are the polymers. Mono means one, poly means many. Some polymers are made up of identical monomers, others are these unique combinations. This right here is a Lego wall. This is a polymer, of course, it's made up of many parts, but it's the exact same monomer, just repeated again and again. Some of them, of course, like all those Lego structures, are unique. It doesn't necessarily repeat, and it uses lots of different monomers to build together. The first monomer we're going to talk about is carbohydrates. This is the main source of energy for most organisms, but we can also use them in a structural role. Something like fruit. Fruit is very high in carbohydrates. That's good for you though, like sucrose, fructose, the stuff that makes them taste delicious. It's there to provide you energy. That's why your body thinks they're delicious. But they are like a fuel station for you. Food is fuel, and the main fuel that we're talking about here is carbs, like sugars or starches. Think of carbohydrates like wood, which actually is a carbohydrate. You can take wood and you can burn it to release heat, like this, or you can build it into a house. Carbohydrates serve both roles. Burning them, building them together, both of those very, very valid functions for them. Carbohydrates are like that. Examples of carbohydrates, glucose, starch, cellulose, the paper that you're hopefully writing this on, that's made out of a carbohydrate as well, though, you know, don't eat it. You can't digest it there. The elements that make up carbohydrates are CHO, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, CHO. And the way to remember what they do for carbohydrates, I like to say carb quick, and I'll tell you the other half of that in a moment, but carbohydrates give you energy now, quick energy. Lipids, however, are going to be different. They are a long-term energy storage. They're like a battery. It's, we don't need it right this second, but we're going to have it for later on. This is a picture of seal blubber, zoomed in quite a bit, but it's still, you know, underneath the skin, which is just that outer layer, we got almost two inches of blubber. They use that not only for insulation, but also they can sometimes go a long time without eating. Well, the fat is a long-term energy storage for them. Some cultures are still allowed to legally hunt whales, and you can see when they actually butcher them and take them apart, this little dark area that we have there, that's the skin. But then those six to seven inches, that's blubber, that's fat. That is energy storage for later. Examples of lipids, as I just mentioned, your fats, your oils, your waxes, all of those are long-term energy storage either for organisms or plants or something else like that. The elements that make up lipids, same as carbohydrates. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. CHO, CHO. And remember how I said carb quick because it's energy now? The other half of that is lipid later. So carb quick, lipid later. In terms of when that energy is going to be used. Carbohydrates now, lipids later, whenever. Third, 
Nucleic acids, they also store things, but they don't store energy, they store information, like heredity, like what makes you like your parents, or what makes a puppy looks like its parents. The things that are passed down generation to generation, that information is stored in nucleic acids, and it's stored in chromosomes. We'll be talking about those more later. Chromosomes and DNA, those are nucleic acids. Examples of nucleic acids. I just mentioned DNA, RNA is another one that we'll be talking about later on, and we'll definitely be talking more about ATP, which is a temporary energy storage, but for the most part, nucleic acids are information storage. The elements that are in here, these are our most complicated ones. It's still got the CH and O, like we saw with carbs and lipids, but we've also got nitrogen and phosphorus going to be added into the mix here. Finally, protein. You've probably heard about it. Well, it's essential for structure and function. It builds and does stuff in the body. Here we can see a protein that's for building something. Here's another protein that does something. Here's a different protein that works with different molecules there. It cannot be overstated. Everything in your body is a protein or was made by a protein. Everything. Examples of protein. Hair, muscle fibers, antibodies, things that actually bind onto the bad guys, the pathogens that are trying to make you sick and they take them away. Even enzymes, which we'll be spending more time on very soon. All of those are protein. They build stuff or they do stuff. The elements that are in protein, C-H-O-N, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Those are going to be our ones here. So you'll notice that all of them have C-H-O, but protein has nitrogen on top of that as well.